Keeping them honest every night. AC 360. CNN. Weeknights 10 Eastern. Well, full disclosure, at one time or another, CNN and other networks have turned to Shubat for his perspective on the war on terror, an apparent look from the inside. But keeping them honest tonight, we're discovering that while each Shubat story just doesn't seem to add up. Here's CNN's Drew Griffin of CNN's Special Investigations Unit. I think we are at war with Islamic fundamentalism and Islamism, which stems from Islam. You know, no historian can deny that Islamists basically invaded Christendom. Walid Shubat's message is the epitome of good versus evil. He has an advertised pedigree that makes him an expert. Islamic terrorist turned ultra-conservative Christian. A U.S. citizen because his mother is American, he is a darling on the terror circuit, the church and university circuits, and yes, he believes the war on terror is a holy war. He portrays himself as a man converted and on a mission. Once a Jew-hating, bomb-throwing terrorist, now a devout Christian convert warning the world, Islam is out to destroy you. That's how you recite the Qur'an. I know the Qur'an inside out. English. And if you meet the unbelievers, then smite off their necks. But what part of smite off their necks do you Americans don't understand? His message before a largely positive crowd of cops and emergency responders at this South Dakota Homeland Security Conference, trust no Muslim especially those who organize. Know your enemy. Know your enemy. All Islamist organizations in America should be the number one enemy. All of them, the Islamist organizations. The Islamic Society of North America should be focused on. You got that on camera? Yes, please. He is being paid $5,000 plus expenses to yeah. speak here with your tax dollars. He was also given a Rapid City police guard during his time in the city. A nice day's work, and judging by his website, where he highlights more than three dozen speaking engagements, Shubat gets a lot of work. Being a terrorism expert has become a cottage industry since 9-11. The Department of Homeland Security has spent nearly $40 million on counterterrorism training just since 2006. DHS doesn't keep records on how much is spent just on speakers. But some of the so-called experts who go around the country teaching, and in some cases preaching, about terrorism and the dangers of Islam are not quite what they seem. People, it turns out, like Walid Shabbat. The first thing I want to ask you is what was the purpose of your talk this morning to these cops and emergency responders here in South Dakota? Well, uh, being an ex-terrorist myself is to understand the mindset of the terrorist, number one. An ex-terrorist, it's Walid Shabbat's claim to fame, a terrorist, a PLO member, who bombed a branch of an Israeli bank in Bethlehem Square, throwing a firebomb on the bank's roof. The problem with the story, with a lot of Shubat's stories, there's no evidence for them. And despite CNN's many requests, neither Shubat nor his business partner have provided us with any. Bombings in Bethlehem Square, you specifically said you threw... The bank was in, in, in the Bethlehem Square. You threw explosives... Yes, I did. ...on top of that bank. Yes, I did. No record. CNN's Jerusalem Bureau went to great lengths trying to verify Shubat's story finding the general location where the branch of Bank Lumi once stood, but not finding anyone who could remember a bombing. We contacted the bank headquarters in Tel Aviv, asking officials to search records. No records found. And Israeli police found no record anyone ever threw a bomb at the branch of the bank. Why would the bank not have a record? Why would the, the Israeli police not have a record? Why would the Israeli police not have a record? I don't know. I mean, I don't know where you check, what dates, all these things. There's another part of his story that doesn't check out. Shubat says he was arrested and spent two weeks in an Israeli prison. There's no record of you being in prison. I think there'd be at least an arrest record. They held you for two weeks. Wouldn't okay. the United States know you, you were in prison you, if you were you a go with, citizen? Well, how about me and you go to the Muscovia prison and extract the records? The records are there. Okay. Well, Would you well, be willing to do so? We did. And the Israeli detention center could find no record of detaining anyone 
with the name Walid Shabbat. Yeah, you, I mean, you obviously can see why people are critical of of your claims. There's a whole lot of no, gaps in your obviously. story. There's no gaps at we, all. In we my don't story. have a bank bombing, and we don't have a terrorist because it turns out Walid Shabbat, even on his own admission, was never charged. I was in prison for a few weeks. What was there a charge? No, I was a U.S. citizen. Remember, I was born by an American mother. The other. Uh, conspirators in the act ended up in jail. I ended up being released. There's another problem, his family. In the neighborhood where Walid Shubat grew up, relatives say he was just a regular kid. And Daoud Shubat, who says he is Walid's fourth cousin, goes even further. There were only two banks in Bethlehem district, and they are Bank Leomi and Discount Bank. They were on Nativity Square, and Walid never had any connection with those two banks, not a close or a distant connection. I tell you, this is out of experience. I am one of the people who are considered a responsible man in the area of Bethlehem or Beth Sahur. I have never heard anything about Walid being a mujahid or a terrorist. He claims this for his own personal reasons. So, Drew, he's saying he claimed this for his own personal reasons. What personal reasons? Well, there's a big personal reason here. It's called money. You know, Anderson, I have to tell you, classic investigative reporting, you follow the money. Like his background, how Walid Shabbat is now making that money is about as mysterious as his past. Yeah. The Walid Shabbat Foundation, is that a charity? Yeah. Walid Shabbat Foundation is part of the FFMU. And what does the FFMU do? Basically, we're in the information, and we, we do speaking, and we do also helping Christians that are being persecuted in countries like Pakistan. And uh, we, we help Christians who are suffering all throughout the, the Middle East. And how do you do that? None of your business. None of your business, that's interesting. Uh, our investigation continues tomorrow night, right? Tell us, what, what are we gonna see tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow, how he makes a business out of his expertise, how these donations to his cause end up with a so-called foundation owned by his business partner. And also the bigger question, Anderson, why are our taxpayers going to pay this guy? He can say whatever he wants, but where are the people vetting these so-called terrorism experts that are suddenly making a lot of money in this country?